Hi, this is Andreas from anythingbarapa.com. Uh, this is another video that goes with my uh, written review of the Arcus 5 internet tablets over at our website. Um, I'm going to show you something I talked quite a bit about in the review. Uh, basically, the difference between a resistive and a capacitive touchscreen. Uh, the Arcus has a resistive touchscreen, while this is the device with a capacitive touchscreen, the iPod Touch. Uh, of course, there's a lot of devices with a capacitive touchscreen, such as the Kovan S9, Soon HD, Samsung P3, and a lot of cell phones. So, it doesn't matter that it's an iPod, the point is that it has a capacitive touchscreen. So basically, the hardware difference between the two devices, or the two technologies, is that um, resistive touchscreens are technically pressure-sensitive screens, not touch-sensitive screens because they have a uh, thin membrane or thin film on top of the screen that reacts to physical input or rather pressure so if you just touch it lightly like this it won't react because you have to press down to make a connection with the pressure sensitive uh, film uh, uh, because of this of course you have the screen is always lowered compared to the rest of the bezel because it has to go on top it can't be all one piece such as on a capacitive touchscreen and uh, that also adds a millimeter extra that you have to that your finger had to travel down when you press the screen um, on a capacitive touchscreen on the other hand it actually re uh, reacts to your finger or any body part really um, the electrical field uh, that your skin generates or that your body generates so anything with the same properties as a finger uh, there are some styluses and uh, a few materials that act the same way as your finger but basically any body part with exposed skin will uh, <coughs> work on the screen but nothing uh, you can use any object to interact with the screen because it doesn't have the electrical field needed so uh, as a result of this you can have a complete glass surface or hard plastic if you want you can see this is all one piece it's flush on top of the device because uh, it will react to your finger through the glass screen it doesn't have to have physical or that much of physical contact as a resistive screen and um, the real world uh, result of this difference is that when you use your finger on a resistive screen, you basically have to press down on it, so you squish your finger a bit, making it uh, blunter and obviously less accurate. So, uh, resistive screens are less accurate to begin with because uh, the touch film on top isn't always calibrated correctly. It might shift because it's not it's not a solid piece that is. Um, flush with the device so it may, might move just as half a millimeter here and there and you wouldn't think that matters but uh, if you're trying to <laughs> press something very small it actually does and also uh, resistive screens they don't um, uh, resistive screens they react to the first point of pressure so if you're a bit off with your finger it uh, even though the middle of your finger presses let's say the A key then uh, it might actually notice you pressing the other key instead because it reacts only to the first place you put your finger or the first contact point when you push down on the screen. Capacitive screens on the other hand have the ability to detect the entire finger because it knows exactly how much is touching the screen and so it's some I'm actually not sure if they have this technology. Uh, technology. I have heard rumors, so I'm guessing they do. But um, they extrapolate the middle or where your finger is uh, actually trying to press down. So if you're not 100% accurate, you uh, it actually appears that you are. And also, because you don't have to squish to your finger, it's uh, much easier to hit the correct keys because the tip of your finger is much more ac uh, or more pointy when you don't have to squish it. So um, uh, I can talk techno mumbo jumbo all day, but I think it's better to show you instead. 
if you can get this to wake up. So this is Google. Bring up the keyboard. And now I have a full 4.8 inch landscape keyboard. So it should be, uh, or you'd think it's easy to type on it because the keys are relatively big. Let's try to type anything but iPod. I went quite slowly there and it became set anything but iPod. And uh, if I try to type I want cook cookies and milk. You see the last word became ank, ilk, because the faster you type the less accurate this becomes because of the extra distance your finger have to travel. You can't do doing doing doing, you have to do I don't know if that made any sense but if you've ever used a resistive touchscreen with a keyboard you know exactly what I'm talking about. So basically the faster you type and the less attention you pay on where you're pressing the less accurate it becomes because uh, as I said it reacts to the first point of pressure and that's it so I can show you instead on the iPod touch and just to show you the difference between this technology I'm going to use it in portrait mode which means I have half the keyboard anything but iPod just like that and it's that easy on a capacitive touchscreen because my finger is much more pointy when I don't have to physically press down and um, it's just so much more accurate I want milk and cookies I actually forgot a letter there but you can see the difference so, uh, this is one of the, I'm pretty uh, satisfied with the hardware of the Arcos, everything considered, but um, the epic downside is the resistive touchscreen because it makes text input a very big pain in you know what, and uh, it just makes every part of the touch interface so much more clunkier to use because you have to physically drag down on the screen and also that's something I forgot to mention of course since you have to press down to make it react even if it's not that hard you also create um, uh, a much much more um, what's the word uh, friction when you drag the screen so if you're scrolling a list or something like that instead of just lightly touching the top of the screen like you would on a capacitive touchscreen you have to press down to make it react and then basically you're dragging your finger across the screen like this and creating much more friction which makes scrolling through list and uh, especially large uh, list of music because this is a media device after all it makes it uh, a much uh, less enjoyable experience because you basically have to fight to make it detect your input every time. So I'm guessing that Arcos did this because of cost considerations which I get uh, though uh, capacitive touchscreens are getting pretty common these days so I don't have any numbers <laughs> for how much cheaper they are I'm guessing quite a bit but I really wish that Arcos had gone with a capacitive touchscreen instead of the resistive touchscreen because it would have made a lot of difference. And also Android, I think most Android phones phones actually have a capacitive touchscreens. So um, that's another issue, it's made for capaci capacitive touchscreens. So you basically have no use for a stylus on this thing because there isn't anything uh, maybe except for the web browser that has uh, anything clickable that small it's everything is finger optimized and so it's really made for a capacitive touchscreen uh, so basically that's it uh, it's it's the only part of the hardware that I'm really dissatisfied with